interesting and something people never thought the Bible really speaks about. And today's topic is really looking at the subject of at the king's dining table. At the king's dining table. That's our topic for today. At the king's dining table. So uh, I hope you enjoy this very interesting study. Uh, let me share my screen so that everyone can see what we're talking about. Uh, so today's study is at the king's dining table. A very interesting study. I know it's going to catch a whole lot of people, uh, make a lot of people uncomfortable. But I, the Bible actually talks about food, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not. And today we're looking at this very interesting study and it's at the king's dining table. Again, going back to the book of Daniel. That's our subject for today. It's a very tasty subject. Yeah, <laughs> a very tasty subject. Okay, um, so we've prayed. Uh, whatever again we're going to be presenting today is 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 something that comes from the Bible, and it's it's important to note. Um, I'm just going to skip through this one again. We all we presenting the center of everything we talk about is the subject of truth. Uh, Winston Churchill says something interesting about the truth. He says, "Men occasionally stumble over the truth." But most of them pick themselves up and hurry as if nothing ever happened. Yeah, and that, that's the truth. A lot of us come across the truth in our daily lives, but somehow pretend as if we've never come across the truth. So some of the lessons we've been covering, uh, that's the truth as it is found in the Bible. And my question to you is, as you stumble on these truths, what's your attitude towards it? Henry David Thoreau and says, rather than love, rather than money, than fame, give me the truth. And ultimately, that's what we're trying to give people, and that is the truth. Uh, and and where questionable, please go back home, study everything we sh we show you every day to see whether or not what we go through is actually the truth. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. once said, "The day we see the truth and cease to speak is the day we begin to die." Yeah. So the day we see we see the truth and cease to speak is the day we begin to die. Uh, the the day we begin dying is the day we stop telling the truth or the day we, we start dying is the day we no longer tell the truth. And so we are running away from that and really starting to look at the truth. Now, going back to the book of Daniel, I, uh, very interestingly, I want us to look at this individual called Daniel. Um, by the way, Lord Daniel is from Dangayo. When the Daniel we look at in the book of Daniel was was actually a teenager, a very young guy, and most of his friends were also teenagers. Uh, and and I want us to really meet this guy because he's a fascinating character. Most of the Bible characters are fascinating. By the way, what we're studying today is something that all of these Bible characters lived up to. Yes, all of these Bible characters lived up to. Most of these Bible characters lived up to what we are dealing with today. Uh, so. Again, going back to the Daniel, Daniel chapter one. So let me explain what happens there as, as a precursor to the book. So uh, some years ago, God predicted that um, um, Israel would then be, or uh, Judah, in fact, would be would be held captive by Babylon because of their disobedience, primarily because of a king who, who was sick and then became well. And instead of showcasing the power of God, he was showing casing is each other as a temple in and, and so on and the beauty and the splendor of the riches and attributing almost his not attributing his healing to god but rather to uh, he began to show off his riches and things like that and god eventually was not happy with that and ultimately said judah will be then besieged uh, in the future by babylon and it happened eventually uh, in the third year of the kid, Daniel chapter 1 verse 1, in the third year of the reign of Joachim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Uh, and the truth is, and, and I want us to understand this, and there's a reason why I'm giving you the background. In life, what you reap is what you sow. And this is the basis for our study today. What you jala is what you get back. So don't think life will give you... Uh, suddenly give you uh, blossoming flowers when you've planted thorns it doesn't work like that what you sow or what you reap you will definitely sow and that's the principle of life don't expect two when you've put in zero don't expect re um, uh, uh, health when you've put in sickness and all these things so we really need to be careful what we put into life because it equals what we've, we've actually so reaped so daniel 1 verses 2 to 3 continues to say and the king spoke unto ashpenaz now when the king besieged uh, jerusalem uh, there was a certain 
type of people he was looking for to then work at the temple. Now, I want you to read with me some interesting part of the book of Daniel, chapter two, chapter one, verses two to three. And it says, And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the Enochs, and, and, and that he should bring certain, now underline the word certain, of the children of Israel and of the king's seed, royalty, and of the princes, children in whom there was no blemish, blemish, but well-favored and skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had the ability in whom in them to stand in the king's palace and on whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So the principle of life and something which I want to state that everyone should know principally today is the fact that um, when we think that the devil is interested in the worst of the worst, it's not necessarily the case. Well, Satan is... Is, is also interested in the prime, in the best of the best. That's why he will always use his efforts to target the best of the best. He sends most of his efforts to those who, who live up to or those who are smart. That's why most of the people that, that confuse us today in this day and age are people who are really smart and, and so on and so forth. So as you can look at here, the king Nebuchadnezzar was not interested in any form of person, uh, any type of person or normal person, but he was looking at people who had no blemish. Motu Ababega, they looked handsome and uh, and they were well favored. They were skillful in all wisdom. So when we talk about Daniel and his friends, this is the description. They, were, they had no blemish, handsome young men, well favored, skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge and understanding science. And today we really want to understand what was the secret behind what we're seeing here in terms of the qualities of Daniel and his friends. And it's very interesting. So the other thing which 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 is very interesting as you get to the end of the line uh, is that the, the king Nebuchadnezzar says to Ashpenaz that such as had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace in whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. You know, Usatana, when, when the devil looks at the prime and the bread and the best, he's also looking to change uh, what God has created in them so that he can use it to his glory. So sometimes, or in fact, principally, the devil is also looking out for the young and the smart and the, and, and the ones without blemish and skillful to use in his own palace. So don't forget that the most targeted in the world are the young. The most targeted in the world are the youth. The most targeted in the world today are, are the ones who are growing up in a world that, that today is so confusing. But ultimately, the plan of the devil is to make sure that none of us get to a ripe old age. And don't forget that. None of us get to a ripe old age. Uh, and so eventually when they gather, Daniel and his friends, very interestingly enough, uh, Daniel and his friends qualify as part of those who are handsome and, and skillful and wisdom and all of that, that. And when you read verse 5, the Bible then says, And the king and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. Now, meat, in the King James Version, refers to food. And of the wine which he drank, wine, so food, wine, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. So, Here's something interesting. When the devil wants to, wants, Satan, when he wants to take over your life, he's not only looking at taking over your life physically only and exposing you to some form of education that links to him. He's also interested in what you eat and what you drink because that determines which side you are on ultimately. Uh, so the king himself begins to then nourish Daniel and his friends or then is interested in nourishing so everyone who's then elected would then eat the same diet as the king ne? the same diet as the king very interestingly enough now before I go into that I need to then state something which is very important for us to know uh, Daniel if you, leave, if, you, if, if you know how Hebrews and Jews live there's a specific diet that the Jews have followed ever since uh, them coming out of, uh, of, of Egypt or ever since they were a Jewish nation God has always designed a diet for Israel to live by. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So anyway, so the king appoints the same diet he eats. So Lentil Yoenkos is the same thing he appoints for all the wise men in Babylon to eat. And when you looked at the table, there was all sorts of food, you know. And when you eat like a king, you know, we, we have a phrase that we say you eat like a king. Uh, so this, this is typically the plate that Daniel and his friends were offered and some of the others who were wise men in Babylon. You look at every side, there were all sorts of meat, all sorts of delicacies, all of this, and it looks appetizing and looks interesting. Uh, you look on every side, you know, everything looked looks 
looked spectacular. But something happens when you begin to further read is that from verses 6 to 7, the Bible then turns and says, Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the Enoch gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. Now, uh, there's a reason why they changed their names, by the way. Uh, all the names of Daniel and his friends refer to their God. No? Uh, and then when these guys now were taken over by Babylon, the Babylonians gave them names that spoke to their gods. So changing your identity. So Satana is very much interested in you losing your identity. That's his main mission. He wants you to move away from the original desire when he created man. He said he was perfect and without without blemish you know he was perfectly designed men was telling him funny sweet as if was and so on so unfortunately some of us live to fulfill others people's destiny and and identities and never our wills really because that's how society lives today i can think in Kasula, whenever i speak to young people one of the things i always make known to them is that stop waking up in the morning to fulfill another person's destiny you are not living this life to fulfill another person's destiny. And this is how we do it. When someone wakes up in the morning and calls their friends to find out what your friend is doing today. Hey, what are you doing today? Can you come? When you live life like that, you must know that you're fulfilling someone else's destiny. When you wake up in the morning, you must first ask yourself, what can I do today? Lord, what will you have me to do today? That's that's how we should be living our lives. Our lives must not be planned after the activities of others, because in that case, you will die having not lived your life. So from now on, remember, start living the, the life intended you to live, and you'll, you'll, you'll realize the day you die, you'll, you'll die fulfilled having lived a fulfillment a fulfilling life okay so anyway the, uh, the devil decides to change their names yes yes linda linda is very important in fact even in africa we treasure names so much names are based on experiences by the way it's going to study one forty four thousand letter later on uh so when we talk about names that's why when when your parents give you a name like usbusiso it's because to them you were a blessing right usbusiso a blessing and then Ultimately, also figure the whole entity changes. <laughs> you are now called You are now called Buddha. You know, and, and it's a sad reality because you know it's very interesting that when you study the were significant in the bible they're even significant even now as we speak because we live up to our names believe it or not there's something linked to our names and you also find that in the bible pretty much so find your name sometimes your purpose is even linked to your name because it was based through an experience and it's a biblical thing lente school Mahayo, by the way okay so so then they are offered the food but then verse 8 of Daniel 1 verse 8 is a very important verse, a very powerful verse that says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that would, he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the Enoch that he might not defile himself. Let me explain why. Okay, so the Babylonians obviously used to worship Upal and so on. So the logo which was which was prepared would often be slaughtered and prayed for to the other gods of of babylon so all the food that was and they would pray for the food on their gods and then after that it would be served to them so that's why daniel then decided that he will not defile himself with the king's food because that very food was had been offered to the other gods Okay, if you're coming in, just make sure you mute yourself because I'm hearing uh, feedback from somewhere else. So let's just make sure that we've muted. Uh, I think it's Sister Bora. I've just muted you. Thanks. Okay, so so Daniel decided not to defile himself. And the, that phrase means something very important. That means the food he was going to eat was going to defile him. What does that mean? The word defile means to make 
dirty or to make uh, uh, something not to be as, as, as holy. So defilement, when something is holy, it's clean. When something is defiled, it's unclean. I hope that makes sense. So can food, can the food we eat defile us? And that's the question we are getting from what Daniel is saying. So he purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine he drank. So which means if you look at the upbringing of the, the Hebrews, now the Hebrews were taught to eat as the Lord had designed. They were taught to drink as the Lord had designed. And so when he got to Babylon, he remembered what he was taught from a young age. Those who eat no matter how are not sons of chiefs. Uh, I'm, I'm reminded of a story I was once told by Wumkosi about a, a group of young slaves who were moved from Africa to Europe as slaves. So as they were moved in a bus escape in, in a ship towards Europe and they kept on beating all these young men and they kept on beating them and every one of them fell down but there was this young man when they kept on beating the others and beating him he would not fall and eventually one of the guys uh, came up and says one of the slave masters came up and says why is it that when we beat up all these young men they fall but when we beat you you don't fall he said listen here I'm a son of a chief and sons of chiefs don't fall so Daniel was a son of a chief and sons of chiefs don't fall. He would not bow down to the di to the diet of the king. No matter how well the diet of the king was, he decided not to defile himself because he knew how God wanted him to eat. And that's what we are talking about today. So Daniel was a man of purpose. Daniel was a man of purpose. Wealth and fame came second to Daniel. Yeah. Wealth and fame came second to Daniel. I'm reminded of a quotation which is found in, 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 in a book. There's a book called Education written by an author by the name of E.G. White. It says, uh, in the last days, they, they, there is going to be a want of men. Men who will neither be bought nor sold. Men who's, who will stand for the truth though the heavens fall. And, and when you look at someone like Daniel, he was a man of, he was a man like that. And that's the type of man we need in these days. Men, men who will neither be bought nor sold. No matter what they offer you, they will ne neither bend because they know what truth is all about. Okay, so wealth and fame came second to Daniel. Uh, he lived a purpose-driven life. He knew what he was living for. Uh, principle was more powerful than feeling. He was not swayed by feeling. Imis were not defining him, but principle defined with Daniel. And, and this is primarily there because there were godly pa parents behind his conviction. He, there were godly parents behind. He was brought up well and he was taught well. He could by believe to train up a child in the way you should grow. You want to get Proverbs. Uh, so that when he is old, he will not he will not forsake. And and some of these things we are seeing today is because Daniel was brought up very well. And the results really, Maubuga, when you study the book of Daniel, is that uh, Daniel eventually tells Ashpenaz, uh, we're not going to eat the king's food. Instead, please give us uh, pulse to eat and water to drink. Give us a vegetarian diet. Uh, Tina, we will not eat whatever. And by the way, it was a not, not a new thing to Daniel. Daniel's diet, Esugekaya, was like that. So he decided not to defile himself with the king's meat or the king's food. Nabanganbake. And guess what? After and on Uti Utu Daniel Maikulman Ashpen Azuti Mamelala. Try us for ten days. Really, try us for ten days. Try us for ten days. Ba pelaba lugula gonke wenko sinale wanyapo. Besetina, just give us veg vegetables to eat and water to drink. Snigan jelogo. Then try us for ten days and compare us. And guess what? After ten days. Daniel and his friends were 10 times wiser, 10 times more knowledgeable. They were more handsome, the Bible says. They were, their muscles showed better and God, because God rewarded their faithfulness. So is there something linked to diet? And that's a question we really want to ask. Uh, is, is it really, does, does a diet do all that really? Does a diet, is, is a diet able to do it? So what was his secret? What was Daniel's secret really? And what was Daniel's friend's secret? Friends, I want to share with you something interesting that comes from the Bible. Um, previously, we spoke about the sanctuary and the fact that nothing unclean would enter the sanctuary. Do you know that there is another temple the Bible speaks about besides the sanctuary where, where Ujesu is right now? There is another important temple that the Bible speaks about, and that temple is you. That temple is you. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16. Anazini, know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, let that sink in for a moment. 
do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? So let me ask you a question. If you knew that President Zuma was coming to your house, what would you do, Engine? Oh, sorry, you are no longer President Zuma. President Ramaphosa was coming to your house. You would make sure the house is clean. You would clean, spring clean, yes, it's serious. Because someone was coming, someone important was coming to your house. Now, think on this text. This text is saying your body is the temple of God. And the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, think about this. If God dwells in you, or the spirit of God dwells in this body temple, in your body, should you do anything, or should you do whatever you want with your body knowing that it's the temple? Should you leave it unclean knowing that it's the temple of God? No, of course not. That means our bodies need to be kept clean because something more holy or someone more holy needs to dwell therein. And it's our temple according to the Lord. If you remember how the Lord breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, he, God breathed a, portion, a, breath, or a part of himself into Adam so that Adam became a living soul. So, Yakubega Food, 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 to 20. What know you not that your body is the, tem is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? Oh, Nkosiam, Aibo, you are not your own? Meaning, are not our own. One day, all of us are going to be accountable for how we lived our lives, particularly what came in and what came out of our bodies. And that's what we are talking about today. Uh, your bodies are not your own because your bodies are the temple of God. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, the Bible says, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. So, um, in whatever you choose to do with your body, it must glorify God. I'm not lying to you. That's about what the Bible says. Anyway, let's continue. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Again, I'm quoting the New Testament here because a lot of people think food is all about the Old Testament. But 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Now, this text says, if you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, I'll make sure that whatever you do, you eat or drink, you must do all to the glory of God. So if I'm holding something that cannot, if I'm about to drink or eat something that does not glorify God, should I continue eating or drinking that thing? Of course not, because it does not glorify God. Number two, if I'm going to eat or drink something that is going to defile or is going to spoil or is going to mess up this body temple, or is only maza lily temple, should I continue really to eat or drink that thing? No. Why? Because it is the body of temple, and that thing is not glorifying God, because I hope that's very clear. Now, why is the diet important? Again, we, go, we are talking about the signs of the times, the end of the age. This is what Jesus says in Matthew 24, from verses 37 to 39. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were what? They were eating and they were doing what? And they were drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day of Noah came into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. But there's no corner you take where there's no food being sold. Everywhere you go, there's food here, there's food here. Everyone is eating and everyone is drinking. And some of the things we eat and drink are defiling this very temple. I'm not saying then we should not be eating. And I'm not saying we should not be drinking anything. And that's what we want to decipher. What does the Bible say uh, in terms of how we should eat and drink? That's one of the things we want to discover today. Romans 12 verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, I am pleading with you that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You know when you sacrifice yourself or when you sacrifice something, you deny of yourself. That's what the Bible says. Deny yourself and present your bodies as a holy as, as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable sacrifice. And be not conformed in, to this world. Do not be conformed to the standard of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind, number one. Uh, so if you treat your body temple well, and guess what it does? It renews your mind. And that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And by the way, one of the things I'll be showing you today is that there is a perfect relationship between diet and how your mind functions. 
Yes. If you don't eat well, your body will, will also tell. Yes. If you don't eat well, your mind will not be well. If you don't eat well, your body will not function well. So there's a, a direct correlation between what you eat and, and, and how your body functions. Okay. Science tells us today. Now, I've given you some biblical verses. Let's look at some of those things as, as we come across it. Today, science tells us that today, more than 95% more than 95% Bazalani, of all chronic diseases is caught is caused by food choices toxic food ingredients nutritional deficiencies and lack of physical exercise and that's really what we are talking about here when you look at how god created adam and eve after creating adam and eve he put them in a garden why a garden because there's sufficient uh, fresh air through the trees trees are natural oxygen factories they produce enough oxygen for us daily you cut down this no reason whatsoever the trees are there for a reason because they clean the air continuously and so god put adam in a garden to maintain and to keep the garden clean when in, in this text in this context we talk of physical exercise if also adam was supposed to tend and care of garden that means he will forever be in the garden a gob up move around the trees and so on and so forth a pet and so on that's physical exercise for him to care and to nurture the garden he would be involved in that physical exercise number two Unkulukulu then grants adam a proper diet that's all you're going to eat by the way the trees had fruits grains and nuts there was no steers, big McDonald's, big nana yonkelento. All that Adam was supposed to eat is fruits as God had designed for him. Very interesting. So food choices today, 95% of the food choices we make are the cause of chronic diseases. The things we love most are the very things that destroy us. The very things that destroy us. But Daniel purposed in his heart, he will never defile himself with the king's food. So the question I'm asking you today is which, which diet do you prefer and where is that diet leading you? Okay, so where did it all go wrong? That's what we want to find out. Where did it all go wrong? Originally, the original diet as per the Bible is fruits, grains, and nuts. If you read the book of Genesis 129, he then says, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in which is, is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you. It shall be for meat. It shall be food for you. That was before the fall, before we entered into sin. This was our diet, fruits, grains, and nuts. That's all we were supposed to eat. There was no, even, there was not even vegetables by then, actually. All we were supposed to eat was fruits, grains, and nuts. That's, that's, that was the original diet up when God created them. And then, unfortunately, because of sin, uh, after, Usatan, after Adam and Eve fell into sin, by the way, then only were vegetables presented because if you read the the bible carefully it says thorns and thistles genesis 3 18 thorns also and thistles also shall it bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herb of the field so in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread till till thou return unto the ground for out of it was thou taken for dust thou art and art and unto dust shall thou return in other words now because of sin then Adam was then directed back into the veg vegetables as well. So not only fruits and grains and nuts, but also vegetables as well after I got one. So that became the diet. And then only after the flood was men allowed to eat um, men allowed to eat flesh. Now corner there's a there's a biblical description based on the Bible. Now uh Let's just look at if I were to decide, or if one of you listening to here were to decide to live a plant-based diet, what would happen to you? Number one, if you were to, to decide tonight you want to live a vegetarian diet, uh, by the way, we'll explain how you, you, you must impact that in your life. If you were to decide to live a vegetarian diet, what would happen? Number one, a vegetarian diet lowers your risk of heart disease by 20%. Yeah. 20 percent literally 20 percent this is a sign that's scientifically proven and again it, it it agrees with the bible and we're going to go through the bible just now uh vegetarians tend to live on average eight years longer than non-vegetarians as an example when when you are a vegetarian by average you live eight years longer than non-vegetarians um and if you were to choose a health-based diet the average cholesterol level of a vegetarian is 161 compared to 210 
in non-vegetarians. Now, one of the difference, a marked difference, really, is very important to understand that. Uh, vegetarians have a lower risk of death related to cancers, heart problems or obesity, and it reduces it by 50% in Matoteni and 30% in women. It's very important to understand that uh, from how. Uh, but then if, let's say you would you would drop, you would stop eating meat as an example. I'm just uh, making an example around meat. Uh, you'd be asking a question, okay, but where will I get my protein? Uh, uh, basically, on a standard, we need about 56 grams of, of protein. And that you can grab from, from lentils, black beans, tofu, bagel, peanut butter, and even a very veggie burger or veggie or veggie patty or itola lapa guma fries if you can pay in as a shop right anyway let's continue so what happened after the flood after the flood then god said man can then eat meat however unkulunkulu designs how we need to eat meat as he is in after the flood this is nine verses two to three Utunkulunkulu. every move that liveth shall be for you even as the green herb have i given you all these things but flesh mamela you can have flesh so long as, uh, uh, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, ye shall not eat. In, if you read carefully the Bible or the Jews, the Jews were not allowed to eat any meat that had ikazi in it. Number one. Number two, they were not supposed to eat any meat that had amafuta in it. So how the Jews then did this is 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 that they then took imit mauta to cleanse imvu, or when after they slaughtered the cow, they would soak the meat in 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 a container containing water and salt for around 24 hours to remove all the blood all the blood and they would remove all the 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 the, the what the the fle you know amafuta uh, uh from from the meat so they would after soaking the the, the meat in the in, in that in that water solution when it comes out that that meat would look very gray meaning there's no blood in it anymore because it soaked all the blood out imagine i don't think most of us would be interested in eating meat that way but why was god saying that because life is found in the blood that's what the bible says so let me put it this way for us to understand when you eat meat in a gazing apart or when you eat meat with the blood in it you are not only eating the flesh, but you're also eating the very diseases that are caught in that blood DNA of that animal into your system as well. So it's very important to understand that. So uh, if, if, if that animal was suffering from specific diseases, it's very easy that those diseases would then be passed on to you because you would be consuming of that of, of leon yama in alilukazing apagat. So it's very un important for us to understand. So the diet of God throughout time, let's look at how God has designed this diet throughout time. So in Eden, it was a total vegetarian fruits, grains and nuts and seeds diet. Ne? And then God added vegetables after sin. And then God then permitted for meat to be eaten in the Bible. But it must be clean animals, not unclean animals. We're going to go through that text just now. Uh, and then... Uh, then the Bible also, as you continue to read, there's a progression to a vegetarian diet, which is recommended today. And ultimately, even when you study the Bible going forward, Zulini, or when Jesus comes back, we're eating a vegetarian diet. Zulini. It talks about fruits and trees, a co a co wimpy, a co McDonald's. There's no meat in any of the Bible text post the, the coming of Jesus Christ. Now, let's just look together. So, according to the Bible, what sort of meat should we be eating? Turn with me to the book of Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11. Maybe I'll summarize you uh, so that we know. So according to the Bible, there's specific meats that we can eat, the specific meats we should not eat. So we can eat only the meat that is clean animals, that is mainly based on clean animals. Any unclean animals you, you, you cannot eat. For instance, Malfunda, oh, 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 verse, verse 2. Utunkulukulu, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever patteth the hoof, and is cloven-footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that ye shall eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, and of them that divided the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean to you, according to the Bible. Uh, Verse 6 as an example, he cheweth the cut but divided not the hoop, he is unclean for you. Verse 7, ingulube, or pig, or pork, he divided the hoof, 
and be cloven footed yet he cheweth not the cut he is unclean for you there's also a reason why pork is not really uh, biologically is not good for you because ingulube is a scavenger a pig is a scavenger it eats anything so if something eats anything ultimately it's it, it may be detrimental to your system of their flesh he shall not eat of their carcasses you shall not touch they are unclean for you that's what the bible says and then the bible also deals with other fish and things like that for instance ama prawns and things those things are scavengers and the bible says we should not eat them because they are unclean if you study the whole book of Leviticus chapter 11 you realize which meats we can eat and which meats we are not are supposed to eat according to the bible okay uh but then is there anything else from a biological any form of research that that qualifies what the Bible is saying. On the 26th of October 2015, there was an article released by the World Health Organization, which found something very interesting. And this deals with the consumption of red meat and processed meat. It says something like this, red meat. After thoroughly reviewing the accumulated scientific literature, a working group of 22 experts from 10 countries convened in whatever, whatever classified the consumption of red meat as probably lilokama, meaning it's very cancer to humans based on limited evidence the consumption of red meat causes cancer in humans and strong mechanistic evidence supporting a, a, a what a cancer effect the association was observed mainly for collateral cancer but associations were also seen for pancreatic cancer and prostate cancer meaning these type of cancers could then eventually be caused by the eating of red meat processed meat um, processed meat against kuluma baloni and so on namara shen and so on was classified as as also very cancerous to humans based on sufficient evidence in humans that the consumption of processed meat causes choleratic cancer, which is very serious. Meat consumption and its effects. This is the World Health Organization. The consumption of meat varies greatly between countries with from a few percent up to a hundred percent of people eating red meat depending on the country and somewhat lower proportions eating processed meat the experts concluded that each 50 gram portion of processed meat eaten daily increases the risk of col col colorectal cancer by 18 percent this is serious this is serious um and not only that uh, there was an article also posted on the new york, new york times asking a question is our food killing too many of us and this is what uh, was then put on the, the article. It said, poor diet is the leading cause, number one, of mortality in the United States. And, and Israel and Tobazalan. More people are dying because of, of poor diet. Causing more than half a million deaths per year because of eating. Just 10 dietary factors are estimated to cause nearly 1,000 deaths every day from heart disease, stroke, and diabetes alone. These conditions are dizzyingly expensive. Cardiovascular disease costs over $351 billion annually in healthcare spending and lost productivity, while diabetes costs $327 billion annually. The total economic cost of obesity is estimated at $1.7 trillion per year or 9.3% of gross domestic product, that's GDP, in, in the United States. It's a serious thing, Bazalaninda, with diet. A lot of us in this world are dying simply because we are not eating right. And the Bible is very clear. Take care of your bodies. There's a direct correlation to how you eat and how your body functions. And that's what we are talking about today. Okay, Asiaginyam. It's not about meat, by the way, only. We are talking about a variety of things. There are other things we eat which are, which cause harm to our bodies. And one of those is some of the things that we drink. What does the Bible say about alcohol? The Bible says wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whoever is deceived thereby is not wise. That's what the Bible says. I'm not saying it. This is what the Bible says. If you drink, uh, a strong drink is raging. And it's true. I mean, when people drink a lot, some become violent and people fight when they are drunk and so on. And whosoever is deceived by it is not wise. Ultimately, it's true. Because again, does he look normal? Does he look sane? Um, how, many, how, many, how many people have been abused by by people who drink, like drinking husbands who come back home and beat their wives. All these things is what we are talking about. And the Bible moves us away from such a behavior because it's not making us wise, right? And it's destroying not only that, but it destroys a lot of our brain cells. Which, well, um, 
So let's look at the dangers of alcoholism. It causes injuries. Number one, maso tagiwe. It's not like you're gonna walk straight uzologu all, all everywhere you go. It causes sexual dysfunction. It causes digestive problems. It causes mental disorders. It causes cancer, heart disease, and eventually even death. Nentogo, and you could be arrested. You go. Wong kumuto puza exen my. I just kulumang eng eng in in let tomut my exen ati une a hangover so that hangover that headache that you get the body is trying to tell you that what you are doing to you to me is not right so that's why you are having the sickness you are having and it's easy to fry it. some people crash their cars because of alcohol now let's look at the the alcohol uh, versus academic performance and this is a research that was done quite recently finding the table below describes the relationship between the average number of drinks consumed per week and the grade point average so how well you do at school it's found that people who have about 3.6 drinks a week uh, you were, were found to be those who are within the scoring of an A uh, as a great average. Once you once you go higher in terms of drinks consumption, uh, about a piece of more than 10.6 drinks, then they're always within the D and F quantile of great performance. So the more you drink, the more your performance mentally becomes weakened. And it's very important. By the way, as Kulumo Chualak Pel, uh, some of our drinks that we consume are very bad for our health. There's a, a lot of sugar contained in some of the stuff that you drink. For instance, Nazguti Coke, Coca-Cola was invented to clean metals. Yeah, Coke was 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 invented to clean in CMB or the the rust on metals. Uh, and today we are consuming that thing. It's a, it's a very dangerous thing for our bodies, by the way. But it, it is quite dangerous for your body. You uh, And this is a slide that shows within 60 minutes, within an hour, what Coke does to your body. So after 10 minutes of drinking Coke, ne, uh, it, 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 it causes a, a what we call phosphoric acid to to gush down through your through your body and after 20 minutes your blood sugar spikes causing an insulin burst your liver responds to this and turning that sugar uh into fat and then after 40 minutes that caffeine absorption is complete and your pupils begin to dilate your blood pressure rises and your responses are liver dumps now obviously because we've been drinking a lot of this after 45 minutes your body your body ups your dopamine production stimulating the pleasure centers of your brains this is physically the same way heroin works so it's pretty much like a drug uh, then after 60 minutes phosphoric acids blinds calcium magnesium and zinc in your lower intestine providing a further boost of in your metabolism uh, this com is compounded by high doses of sugar and artificial sweeteners which increases the urinary erection Ex excretion of calcium the caffeine eventually uh, produces and, and and does all sorts of things to your body ultimately it can cause it, it basically causes harm to your body within a space of an hour or possibly coke uh, and we're not only talking about coke other things um become what we call um a stimulus i mean who can't live without a, a cup of coffee, uh, which is high in caffeine, by the way. There are people who can't live without a cup of tea. It's almost become a drug to them. It's very interesting how the how these things work. Um, and, and literally, God has designed such a natural source of drink, which is perfect. Everyone who drinks water feels fulfilled, as I can say, which quenches the thirst like water. But because we're so used to drinking all these things, Kunzima, <laughs> to think about drinking water every day of your lives, and uh, and 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 basically we are seeing the results, right, of moving away from God's original design. So we are asking the question: Is then God concerned about your health? Is God really concerned about your health? The answer is yes. The third John chapter two says, "Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health." Even as thy soul prospers, God wants you to be in good health. And let us come by. By the way, we're not only talking about um, uh, of meat and and things like that. There are other things which are more important. So we we talk today when you really study the Bible, it it expresses what we call the eight laws of health. So really, if you want to live a good life, uh, the Bible uh, really through the Bible you are able to understand that it's through nutrition, enough exercise, water enough sunshine 
uh, temperance. So we, we talk about temperance, even in the good stuff. So nano mangaba vegetarian, you can't overeat veggies, you will die. You can't overeat or over drink water, you will die. Uh, so proper nutrition, proper exercise, vuge kseni, do something. Um, in this house, for instance, we, we have a plan that every day when we wake up, we will do ama lunges, we will do ama, ama push-ups now that we are in the lockdown um, and so on and so forth. We will drink lots of water and make sure that we have enough sunshine. Go out. I even encourage people to go out, grab some fresh air and come back into the house. So enough sunshine, temperance, fresh air. We always have to open our first air. It's, 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 it's a battle, you know, and especially in our homes. I remember one time I said to my Kokwam, yes, yes, Maui, we should we should try by all means to open our windows even when we sleep. Because it's important to keep the windows open. Because the fresh air needs to come in and replenish the soul as it is asleep. But if your windows are closed, it means all these germs continue to germinate and there's no clean fresh air flowing through your houses at night. So you always need to keep the windows open. So to have all these things were more concerning than their health. And ultimately, guys, even when we sleep, we should sleep with the window open. And Nanomakband always have a, a small portion of the window open so that fresh air flows in through your system. We all need a bit of fresh air. But the other thing is rest. A lot of us don't rest. People sleep at one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock, watching movies and watching TV. We don't have sufficient rest. And health tells us, the health laws tell us, even science even tells us, the more rest you have, it's important because your body needs that rest. Every one of us should have at least eight hours of sleep. So if you're not having eight hours of sleep, you are causing harm onto your body. You're destroying this temple. Every one of us should at least have eight hours of sleep. Learn to sleep early and learn to rise up early. And in doing so, you'll maintain a, a good and healthy life. And last but not least, trust. You always need to trust in God. You could be nutritious, exercise, water, and water, but ultimately all of us are sustained by Nguru. And that's why trusting in God and praying to him will keep you sustained. So the plan of keeping this body temple whole is proper nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance. And by temperance, we're saying be temperate. Don't overeat. Don't overdrink. In a month, you don't over drink that, but it's sufficient. We talk about eight glasses of water a day. Keep your windows open, sufficient air flying in. Wash your clothes, keep yourself clean. Geza, you read the news that most of us men are not washing. Make sure you wash, uh, keep yourselves clean and rest and eventually trust in God. That's the key to success and keeping your bodies. By the way, even to those who study at school, there's a reason why you, you want to eat right when you are studying because your brain functions better when you eat right. So there's a direct correlation around how we eat and how our body performs and how our mind performs as well. So yeah, according to what the Bible is teaching us. And it gives you positive attitude, right? And not only that, we're not only talking about food, but being having a positive attitude also contributes to good health that's why the bible says the light of the eyes rejoiced the heart and a good report maketh the bones fat another translation says uh, uh good laughter uh makes the bones fat so don't be a gloomy person hello and so on that's not how god wants us to live uh by the way when you portray it affects your body you know, I know of someone who really is like that. And when you look at th that person, she, she that person normally suffers health wise because that's how they choose to express themselves. And by the way, if you're a jolly person, you'll be quite healthy. And, and it brings, it makes your bones fat, right? And there's a direct correlation in terms of that as well. Positive attitude, a positive lifestyle. Now it's good. It takes more muscles to be quieter than to be happy. So always, always be happy. Yeah. So, so keep yourself smiling it will work for your system as well so what if you do as you will with your body what is going to happen to you according to the bible the bible says know you not that you are the temple of god that dwelleth if any man defile the temple of god him shall god destroy that's what the bible says if any man defileth the temple of god him shall god destroy for the temple of god is holy which which temple ye are you are that temple. And God wants us all to keep this temple clean. 
so we can't drink as how we want because it needs to give glory to God. We can't eat as how we want because the Bible says, whatsoever you eat or drink, do it all to the glory of God. So we're not animals, but we are created in the image of God. And God wanted us to eat. And we are where we are today health-wise and we are dying today where we are today health-wise because we've moved away from God's original design. And some may say, but it's not easy. And the truth is, it's not easy. I remember the first time when I wanted to become a vegetarian. It was not easy. I was sitting with my friend Siriso can tell you the story. And it's not to say I'm perfect, by the way. I've had my episodes. Uh, when I first stopped eating meat, um, I remember Slele Matawut when it was a camp meeting. And people were taking out their KFCs and I was there. And this is when I decided to stop eating meat, by the way. So when they were eating their meat, I was like, hey guys, and, and that just shows how uneasy it is. It's difficult because our bodies have been used to eating this thing. And that's why I'd also encourage for anyone who wants to start eating right and do things proper, they in there must be a gradual moving away from how you consume things. Because one month it may impact your system and it's very important to consider that your body relies on specific vitamins and minerals so as you let go of certain things there must be you must be able to substitute those things with the proper things and and be able to measure what you are letting go on so that your body can take off and at first when you start to let go it becomes hard but i can tell you today uh Uguti, when you move away from eating any sort of thing there's direct results and it shows by the way you live by the way if you choose a healthy diet and a vegetarian diet as an example i can tell you this much you don't suffer from headaches. You don't go often to the doctor. And so on and so forth. Because you are eating right. And your body is fresh all the time. It's easy for you to remember scripture. Or even to memorize scripture. Or to, even to study something. For that matter. Because you are eating right. And your body is fresh and ready to consume all these things. But today we are dying because we are not eating right. What use is a dying, na is a, is a dying church preaching to a dying nation? God wants us to be healthy so that we can speak to the world that is dying and be able to draw them back even from this thing at diet. So what is the solution really? The solution is every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. We must all be temperate. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible charm, but we an incorruptible. If therefore so run, not as un uncertainly, so fight not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself may be a castaway. That's what Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians. So bring your body to subjection. If your body rules you, you must know that you are in trouble, but you must be able to rule your body. You must tell your body to say no. Yeah. Number one, and so on. And these things impact our bodies. Eventually, we suffer from the diseases we suffer from because we have in we have allowed ourselves to consume any odd thing that may impact our bodies, eventually leading us to die. Uh, by the way, I I I I I subscribe to a a a what you call a an organization or a church organization by the name of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Just as a, and I'm not I'm not promoting the church in any way. By the way, I'm just telling you a scientific uh, thing that was what that was proven by National Geographic, uh, which was an article a column about the science of living longer. Uh, because in our church, we we, we basically preach and and advise people to we don't enforce it by the way it's, it's a choice we just advise people to live healthy lives so we do, we do normally talk about health and you can realize why that's important i mean look at the issues around uh, wuhan and one of the one of the, the one things they are talking about scientists are talking about today because of covid virus is because of what people ate right they were eating almost anything uh and and so uh, when you study that, it's important for us as a church and as a people to, 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 to really encourage people to live healthy lives and to eat lives. So that's why we often promote good exercise, eating well, drinking water, and, and, and so on and so forth. So this article says, east of Los Angeles, Loma Linda is a community that includes over 9,000 uh, Seventh-day Adventists, a religious group that is significantly, that is significantly longer lived than average American. Adventist culture is focused on healthful habits such as vegetarianism and ones against alcohol and smoking. The secrets to longevity, according to this article, says besides the healthful habits integral to their belief system, Adventist drinks 
plenty of water, eats lots of nuts, exercise regularly, and tend to maintain a healthy weight. They nurture emotional and spiritual health. They value their fam family relationships and prize volunteering. Okay, that's just a side note that, uh, with a scientific fact around eating right and drinking right. So ultimately, and the truth is, uh, Philippians 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ that, strength, that strengthens me. And today, by the way, is a very light lesson, but very important and very hard because it's a very practical lesson. And and how we're going to close it today is going to be very interesting. Uh, Bazalane, Daniel said to Ariok, Antioch, uh, test us for 10 days just give us water and pulse to eat for 10 days and prove us after 10 days whether you'll not see a difference and guess what after 10 days they were 10 times smarter 10 times wiser 10 times more handsome 10 times more muscled everything about them just showed that everything was a, was was a proper and guess what as we close this lesson today i want to challenge you to a 10 day 10 day 10 day eating right plan i want to challenge you 10 days for the next 10 days as we close up this this 21 days we have 10 10, 10 days by the way remaining 21 days and hopefully on day 21 all of us will give a testimony of how the experience was so this is what i'm challenging you to do so for the next 10 days i guess you will not die i promise you uh, if you have medication, drink your medication. I'm not telling you to stop that. So for the next 10 days, I'm challenging everyone. If you if you want to join in, please put your name in the in the, in the chat group to say, yeah, by so Tandas or Google Caesar for the next 10 days. For the next 10 days, no tea or coffee. Let's drink only water. For the next 10 days, try it. Water, try eight glasses of water a day and try by all means not to drink anything else except for water. There's a reason why. There's a direct correlation around health. So we're going to try it for the next 10 days. Only water. For the next 10 days, if you can, try and not to eat meat. If you want to uh, try and go for fish rather than in uh, but also it's been proven that meat, uh, fish is also quite more dangerous because of, of the iron contents and things that are falling on the seas and stuff like that. But at least try to go towards that. Uh, but I, as I said, no mafuta on our meat. If you if you, if you are in Yama, okay, run away from mafuta for the next day, starting tomorrow. We're not going to start today, obviously. But starting tomorrow, no water and try just for ten days. You won't die was a line i promise you just for 10 days try and not eat meat and try not to drink anything else except for water try and exercise every day for the next 10 days it's a challenge uh, uh spirituality is not only about the things we read only but it's about how we live our lives and that's what the bible has been teaching us today so for the next 10 days no drinking anything except for water next 10 days we try and avoid meat try and avoid meat for the next 10 days try and exercise a lot uh do maybe a couple of exercises here and there uh, for the next 10 days live your life with fresh air enough fresh air but make sure there's sufficient air coming in and even sleep with your window open people who suffer from flu the worst thing you can do if you're suffering from flu is to keep the window closed because ultimately you need fresh air to replenish your system as you sneeze suffering from flu is to keep the window closed because ultimately you need fresh air to replenish your system as you sneeze lama gems they keep coming back to your same system and there's no clean air circulating around so keep your your windows open have clean air coming in uh, and then now once once in a while at least like three times a day go out and uh, get some fresh air light at least some zimbeni uh you need that vitamin d for your body by the way and then go back and clean him some five minutes just get some uh, some some nice fresh air and some nice sunshine i need to hear stratin i said in your immediate yard uh this is not encouraging by the way breaking the rules so we're saying in your own location yeah go out get some nice sunlight and some nice fresh air five minutes and then go back in and Jenny. so we're promoting that let's go to the rules of health again so what would you say fresh air yes eight glasses of water a day exercise be temperate don't eat too much when you are uh, don't want to but eat temperately uh, and and try and get eight hours of rest a day Make sure you pray. Trust in God. 
And as you do this exercise, I want you to trust that God will do something in your life and God will do something in your body. A lot of us are suffering. We are, we are sick and God is about to heal our sunshine, water and population. Make sure there's some greens in your plate. Make sure that for, let's not sleep at night and let's try.